Hey guys, welcome back to Crafts Go Bloom. Today we are going to be making this no sew cardinal bird pattern. We've got the little wings there, we've got a beak that sticks off, some feet, and we've even got some tail feathers. We've also got that pointed head detail that you see in a cardinal. Now, the way this pattern is going to work is I will put the instructions at the top of the screen and go ahead and pause whenever you need to to complete the round that we're working on and then just catch up with me when you've finished your round. So let's take a look at the yarns that we're gonna to use today. For our other supplies, I'm gonna be using a six millimeter crochet hook and I'm using that because that's what works for me to be able to crochet tightly enough that there are no holes in my project where the stuffing is gonna stick out. So you should use whatever hook you need to to achieve that with the yarn that you're using. And that might be a different size hook for you, even if you're using the same yarn as me. A pair of sharp scissors, a tapestry needle, a stitch marker, and I have 12 millimeter safety eyes here. These are not recommended for any children three and under or who are still putting toys in their mouth to chew on. And if you're making this for a younger child, I suggest doing yarn eyes. For the main yarn of this project, I'm going to be using Bernat Blanket in the color Crimson. And I just only have this little bit left, so I've taken my label off, but I started out with a big skein of it. For the beak and the feet, I'm gonna be using Bernat Blanket in Orange Leaf. And for the black detailing in the face, I'm using Bernat Blanket in the color Coal. I also have a bag of stuffing sitting off to the side. I will put a picture up here to show you what it looks like. And you're going to need some kind of stuffing. I use polyfill that I order from Joanne in the United States. The first thing that we're going to be making are the feet. And we make these ahead of time because when we get farther down the pattern, we are just going to tie these in and not have to sew them. So we need to have them done before we get there. And while we're looking at this, this is the top of the foot and I have them so they kind of curl up. Look at the foot here. The talons curve upwards when it's sitting down. So that's how you can tell if you have your foot upside down or not. So let's move these out of the way and get to work on the first one. Now I'm gonna show you how to make this one time, but you'll need to stop and go back and make a second one for your bird to have two feet. And the first thing that we're gonna do is make a slip knot and chain five. So to make a slip knot, I just wrap it around my fingers and push it through the center and then tighten that up. And then we're gonna chain five. And if you've never done that before, you're just gonna yarn over and pull through the loop on your hook. And that's one, two, three, four, and five. Once you have your chain five, we're going to slip stitch in the second chain from the hook. So we're going to be skipping that first V, finding the second one, insert your hook, pull up a loop and pull it through, then also pull it through the loop that's on your hook. And that's a slip stitch. And we're going to do that one more time. And then we're going to chain two and repeat. We're going to go through that second chain on the hook with a slip stitch, and then you're gonna slip stitch back in that same spot where you attached like the first talon. And go through there like that, and then do it one more time. So chain two, slip stitch in the second chain from the hook, slip stitch back in that main area that we keep going back to, and then we have two more chains going up the leg and we're going to slip stitch in one time into both of those. And we've got our foot. We're going to chain one just to finish this off and then cut a tail that matches the tail that you've already started with because that's what we're going to use to tie this inside of the bird. So you just want to make sure that you have a long enough tail you'll be able to make a couple of knots. Now, as I said before, go ahead and pause this and make one more foot and then we'll start on the bird. The first thing we're gonna do is start with a magic ring. And the way I make a magic ring is to lay the yarn across my hand, pinch it with my thumb, and then wrap it around those three fingers and put my thumb on the X. I go across the back of my hand and grab it with my pinky, stick my hook up under there and grab that second loop and turn that. 
Then I grab the yarn that I'm holding with my pinky and I use my pinky to squeeze that while I'm pulling the yarn through. And then we have our magic ring. And I promise that does get easier if that's the first time you've done that. Just watch it a couple of times, you'll get it down. Now for round one, we're going to single crochet seven into the magic ring. The way we do that is to stick our hook in, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through two loops. And when you finish doing seven, go ahead and pull that tail and close up your magic ring. Just don't pull so tight that the yarn actually snaps on you. That can happen. And then grab your stitch marker and place that in the last stitch that you just made. And then when we get around to round two, we'll know where we need to stop. For round two, we're going to single crochet seven for a total of seven stitches. For round three, we're going to do an increase in every stitch, and that will get us a total of 14 stitches. For an increase, you're just going to do two single crochets into the same place. It's starting to make this little cup at the top of the bird, so I'm going to push that out so it's a little easier to work with and the tail of your magic ring is always the inside of your project. So for round four, we're going to increase and then single crochet one seven times for a total of 21 stitches. So in the first one, we're going to put two single crochets. And in the next stitch, we're just gonna put one and you're gonna alternate that pattern. Next up for rounds five and six, we're going to just single crochet one in each stitch around for a total of 21 stitches. So make sure you do two rounds of that for five and six, and I will meet you back here. I finished my two rounds for round five and six. Now for round seven, we're going to start working on the black stitches right here. And we're just going to be switching back and forth between the black and the red yarn. That I wanted to give you a visual, this is where we're headed. So the first thing we're gonna do is in red, we're gonna single crochet seven. And on that seventh stitch, I'm not going to complete it because I'm going to grab my black yarn. And um, if you're unfamiliar with how to do this, when you do a single crochet, you're gonna pull up a loop and then you're going to yarn over and pull through both loops but I don't want to pull over with that red yarn so I'm going to grab the black yarn and pull that through and that's how we're going to change colors. Now we're going to do seven single crochets in black and I'm going to go over top of both of these tails just this time though because when we get farther in the face I don't want to single crochet over that red and get a red line going through here. I don't want to see that at all. So just for this first one, just to kind of secure things, I'm going to go over top of this black yarn, black and red yarn. So the black yarn is going to get secured in there as we're crocheting over top of it. And the red yarn, we're really just getting it to the other end of the black. And it's the only time that we can kind of do a cheat like that where we can just pick up our red yarn again when we need it. So we're doing seven of these black single crochets. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six. And again, on that seventh one, we're just going to drop all of the black yarn and yarn over with the red and pull that through. And then seven more red single crochets to finish out the round. For round eight, it's going to be similar, but we're going to be adding in the beak. So we're going to start out with seven red single crochets.
And again, when I get to that seventh one, I'm going to be coming in here and making sure that I'm finding the black working yarn, not the black tail. That can be super frustrating. So grab that working yarn. And when you go to bring the working yarn over here, you're just going to grab it, put it over your hook and pull it through. But you need to make sure that you're not making that line across there. Because if you do that and you do it too tight, you're going to squish the face of your bird. So you need to make sure that you're pulling this just flat along the inside of the piece. But we don't want it to distort the face. You've got to wiggle it around a little bit so that it's just laying inside of there. And then the next thing we're going to do, I'm also going to pull my red, like if you can see I'm wiggling this around a little bit so if this happens to you, pull my red tail tighter and that holds everything down a little better. But this time around we're going to leave that red tail. We can't crochet over it or we're going to see bits of red that we don't want. So we're going to start off in the black by doing three black single crochet. But again, when you get to that third one, we're going to change color, except this time we're going to be adding in our orange so that we can do the beak. So we're going to switch colors the exact same way. We're just going to the orange instead this time. And I'm going to go over the, I'm going to leave the orange tail um, down. I don't care about that one, but I am going to go over the black and we're going to make the beak. And the, and the way we're going to do that is with a half double, a double, and then another half double, all in the same stitch and all in the front loop only. And if you're not sure how to find the front loop only, just insert your hook like normal and pull apart those two loops that are on the hook. Now, you're not going to be able to see this very well because it's black yarn, but in person you will be able to figure out which one is just that front loop only. So to start the beak, we're going to do a half double. And to do a half double, you're going to yarn over insert your hook and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through all three. And then for a double, you're going to yarn over, insert your, insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two again. And then we're back to a half double. And remember, all of these are going into the front loop only of the same stitch. And while I was talking, I just kind of went on autopilot and finished that stitch. But on the end of that half double, I'll back up so you can see the whole thing, we're going to yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, but then we're going to drop the orange and pick up the black and yarn over and pull that through. And then we've got three more black single crochets, again switching to red on the last one. And this is the most complicated part of the entire pattern. You just had to switch to that orange and then we're done with the orange and we're back to just blacks and reds. Now, same thing here. We've got to find our, that's our red tail. We don't want that. Got to find our red working yarn. And I'm going to just kind of push everything up out of my way and lay that red yarn flat across the inside so that I'm not tightening that face up and distorting its shape and pull that through. And then we're going to finish this out with seven red single crochets. Now, if all these tails are starting to drive you crazy, we are going to clean them up after this round. So the first thing we're going to do for round nine is single crochet eight in the red. So we're actually doing one more than we've been doing. So you're going to single crochet red into that black, but same thing. We need to move everything out of the way and find our black working yarn. And I'm going to push everything down this time. Grab that black, pull it through. My black is doing okay, but my red is getting kind of wonky. So I'm going to pull that tighter. And in black, we're only going to be doing five this time around. See, I can feel, I'm not sure if you guys can see that, but I can feel that the black yarn is too tight and it was like pulling everything together like that. So we need to fix that up. Okay, we're gonna do five single crochets in black. The first two are pretty self-explanatory, but when we get to that third one, 
we're going under the beak and we're finding that back loop that we left there before. When we did our beak in the front loop only, we left that back loop open just so we could do this stitch. That's going to kind of close that up. And then that was our third black stitch. Go around the beak into the next black and do stitches four and five. And we're gonna be looking for our red working yarn to finish off that fifth stitch. And we're gonna finish off the round by single crocheting eight in the red. Now, if you haven't been untangling this as you go, you're probably coming up with quite a mess like I am here, which can get quite annoying. So let's clean up some of that. I'm gonna pull out my working yarn and we're gonna get rid of this orange. So let's get everybody straightened out here. And some of these tails on the inside here are just gonna be crisscrossing in the back and we are just gonna ignore them. Um, those are gonna be that way and they'll hide inside and we'll never see that again. So for the orange, go ahead and cut an even tail here. And if you crocheted over things the way that I, the same way that I did, you'll have one stitch here in between your two orange tails and you'll be able to just tie that in a couple of knots and you can tie those tight. That's not going to um, distort anything on the front of your project. You're not going to see anything crazy there. And then we are done with those and you can tuck them on the inside or let them hang and we won't be doing any more with the orange like that. And when we did one single crochet before the beak, one under and one after, that actually pulled the beak a little bit so it kind of cups out like an actual beak so it won't be as flat and that's okay. Now round 10 is going to be our last round using the black and then we'll be able to clean that up and we'll just be working with red from then on. So for round 10 we're going to start by single crocheting 9 in the red. And of course when you get to that ninth stitch we're going to switch to the black and we're going to do three more single crochets in the black. Get that black to lay flat, pull on my red to cinch that up. We're going to do one, two, three, and as I'm going through, I'm trying to push these down out of my way so that I can single crochet around, like away from them. Um, so if it looks like I'm kind of inserting my hook funny and pulling things weird, because I'm trying to keep those out of my way. And on our third stitch, we're gonna put the black down, pick the red back up again, and do nine more single crochets in the red. We are done using the black yarn, but I'm going to go ahead and leave it attached just for one more round just to secure it with that red and then we'll tie off the black after this. So for round 11, we're going to start making the wings and the beginning of it, we're actually going to start making this point that comes out on the back of the bird so that we get a little bit of a tail feather and it helps it to sit up straighter. So we're going to start by single crocheting one. Then we're going to chain three. One, two, three. And then we're going to single crochet one in, we're going to skip that first um, chain on the hook. And then we're going to single crochet one in the next two. So we've got one, two. Put another single crochet in the stitch where you started. and then single crochet five. Now we're gonna be making the wing and to make the wing, we're gonna do five double crochets 
in the front loop only of the next stitch and make sure that all five of those are going in the front loop only. And then you're going to single crochet nine. And then we're going to make the second wing the exact same way we made the first wing and we're going to put five double crochets into the front loop only of the next stitch all five going into one stitch. And then before we move on with the rest of the round you want to take a look at the front of the bird and see are your wings lining up with the beak in the center. Um, you might have to do a different number of stitches in between the wings to get them centered. Nine is what works for me, but if you have a different tension than I do, you're using a different hook size, um, different yarns, that can cause them to show up in different places if you're not putting the stitches where they need to be. Also, if I'm yarning over this entire time, if you yarn under, it will change your project and you'll need to place them differently. So as long as you're following the beginning stitches of this round and eventually the end of the stitches in this round the way they need to be, you're going to be okay as long as you'll be okay as long as you just figure out how to get these centered. So I have nine stitches in between, but if you need eight or you need seven, um, you might need ten, whatever it is that you need to adjust, just make sure that they're centered and then if you took a single crochet out over here to center that wing then you just need to put it in behind the wing so your stitch count might look different than mine but i've seen a lot of people make these and um, if you crochet the same way that i do they will turn out in the center but if you crochet differently you just need to make some adjustments for you and that's okay so once you're done with that wing we're going to single crochet eight but we're going to take the stitch marker out because we're going to be going past it and that's not where we're going to be stopping. So we're going to start by doing eight single crochets. We've got one, two, three, four, five. The first five are pretty typical. Then for the sixth one, we're going to go across over into here. There's a little bit of a gap there from that chain that we made earlier. So we're going to fill that in with a single crochet and then seven and eight are going up the back side of that chain that we made at the beginning of the round. So that was seven and this is eight and now we've got that point that we're going to work on that's going to um, give us some some tail feathers and that is the new stitch that you're going to put your stitch marker in. Now let's pull out that working yarn and deal with this black and we're going to be putting in our eyes as well. So first thing we're going to flip it over and deal with the black in the same way that we dealt with the orange. If you have a tail in there still of black yarn, I know that we crocheted over it at the beginning, but if you've still got one long enough that you can tie some knots with then go ahead and use that. If you don't have a long enough black tail, you can always take your red tail that came out of your magic ring and tie that. You just need to be careful with either option that if you tie this off, you need to not pull this one very tight because you're going to start pulling your project on the front side. So the first knot is always really loose when you're doing something like that. And then the second knot can be as tight as you want it to be and any other subsequent knots. I always tie a couple just to make sure that everything's staying in place. And now that is all cleaned up and everything can be tucked out of our way to finish the rest of the bird. But before we move on, let's go ahead and get our safety eyes in. Now I'm using 12 millimeter safety eyes today. And if you've never used them, you get this eye part that goes on the front and has these ridges. And then we're gonna turn this like that and we're going to push it over those ridges until it clicks. We don't want to do that though until it's in our project. It gets pretty permanent if you do it now. We're going to be adding the eyes between rounds six and seven, about four stitches apart. What is more important though is that your beak is in the center. 
So I add them right there under that um, first set of black stitches and I'm putting them right on the outside of the beak. I've seen some other people who um, move them out a little farther on some of my other birds and I'm not sure if that's going to line up very well for you with this black face. And for a cardinal, I really want those eyes to just sink down in there. Um, if you look at a picture of a real cardinal out in nature, his eyes are just kind of hiding in there. So I'm going to flip this upside down, put my thumb on here and push the eye through the back. I'm not pushing it so far that the actual eye pops out. There we go. And moving the tails and um, that the yarn that we had to carry to make the black on the front face, I'm moving that out of the way so they don't get hooked in here. And then you just push this down until that snaps in there. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And we're looking pretty cute, so let's keep going. Up next, we've got round 12, and we're going to start out by single crocheting eight. When you finish those eight single crochet, that should get you right up to this wing. We are not going to crochet inside of this wing anymore, or on the outside of this wing anymore. We're going to leave that alone. But we're going to go underneath the wing and find the back loop only of that stitch where we put all of these feathers in the front loop only. And we're going to do one single crochet under there in that back loop only. Then you're going to do nine more single crochets or however many single crochets you had to put in between your wings to make them centered. If you only did eight, then only do eight now. However, we need to make sure we're skipping over all of these double crochets to find the first single. So we can count one, two, three, four, and five, and we're going into this stitch next. And it's the same thing when you get over to this other wing, you want to make sure that you're putting your next single crochet under it and then skipping. I like to pull this one kind of tight too so that we don't end up with a gap under there. And then skipping one, two, three, four, five and going into the next single crochet and finish the round with eight single crochets after the wing. Now for rounds 13 and 14, you're just going to single crochet one in every stitch around for a total of 27 stitches and make sure that you are doing that for two rounds for round 13 and 14. Okay, I finished round 13 and 14. Now for round 15, we're going to invisible decrease four times. And the way that you do an invisible decrease is by going through the front loops of the next two stitches Yarning over, pulling through those, yarning over and pull through the two on your hook. And that was one. Now we just went into this loop right here. So it can seem like there's enough space to grab it, but we want to skip that because we just did that one. Otherwise we're going to throw off our stitch count. There's the second, third, and the fourth. Then we're gonna single crochet three. We're going to invisible decrease three times. Then we're going to single crochet four. And then invisible decrease three times to finish the round. And once we finish round 15, we're going to pull out our working yarn and add our feet. Now we're going to be adding our feet between rounds 14 and 15. And we want to do that before we crochet row, six, row 16. And I add them straight down from the eyes, four stitches apart. 
So coming straight down from the eyes is the way that I figure out if I've got them in line. So I'm going to come straight down and stick my hook in here. And let's count. One, two, three, four. Yep, that should be even. So remember, we looked at what is the top and what is the bottom of the feet. Um, honestly, what's most important is that you get them going the same direction. But I want to push my little talons and see which direction they go. They won't, they won't go backwards. They'll just keep falling down. So I'm going to push them and see they're going up. So that is my top side. And where I've got my hook, I'm going to pull this left loop through. Then I'm going to make sure I'm going over a full stitch and pull that other, other tail through. I'm not going to tie it off just yet because I want to make sure that I have both of them where I like them. So I'm going to leave that sit for a second and go over one, two, three, four stitches. Pull that one through. Make sure I'm moving over a full stitch to pull through the other tail. And I'm going to pull both of them tight just enough to check it out and see they're coming straight down from the eyes. They look centered on the beak. And because this project isn't that big, sticking your crochet hook on here is the best way I've found to really get straight lines um, when you're trying to come down and work on that. So I like the placement of both of those. I'm just going to flip these over and tie a couple double knots like I've done before. And you can tie these as tight as you want. One thing you do want to be careful of when you're tying these is that you make sure you're getting the two tails from the same foot, that you're not tying one of these tails over to this foot. It's even more so after you have that first one done. Tuck those out of your way and make sure that you're getting the two tails from the foot that you are trying to attach. And we can tuck all of that in. Now is also the time that we're going to add stuffing. But you're only going to be able to add so much, and then once we start to crochet round 16, you'll be able to fill in this tail. So get everything that you can get in there that isn't going to be in your way. Okay, I've got stuffing all the way in the body, and I've got quite a bit of a gap here, but I'm just going to go ahead and leave that, and we'll work on round 16, and we'll still have a hole to be able to push the stuffing in there. If you have more than I have, that's totally fine. Now for round 16, we're going to do eight invisible decreases and then one single crochet at the end. Now that I've done all of my stitches for round 16, I'm going to finish off and I do that by chaining one and then I'm going to cut a long tail longer than I've been cutting for the um, like the feet and stuff like that. And I'm going to pull that yarn through and we're going to weave that in eventually, but I still need to add my stuffing in my tail, but I've got enough of a hole that I can stick some in there. My stuffing is now complete and we have got that tail filled out, but we still have this hole at the bottom that we need to take care of. So thread your yarn onto your tapestry needle. And we're going to close this up by sewing through the front loops only of that last round. And I give it a little bit of a tug every time I go through one stitch to keep closing that up. If I don't give it a little bit of a tug and I try to pull them through all of the stitches at once at the end, every now and then that'll break my yarn. It just depends on what, you're, what yarn I'm using. So if that's a problem for you, um, or you think that that's going to be a problem for you, just give it a little bit of a pull every time you get through one loop. And there we go. We've got it closed up and I can see all of these little stuffing fuzzies sticking out that we do not want. So I just wait until I get to the end here and then I pull all of those off and um, a lint roller can even be great to help get rid of all of that. So I'm going to go through one more just because I think the hole is still a little bit too big and Whoops, don't need that. There we go. 
Now to continue weaving in this end, I'm going to go through my project here, trying to just skirt along the yarn and not stick my needle through that stuffing. So I'm trying to get as little stuffing as possible to fall out that I've got to deal with. And then I'm going to go through the loops of those single crochets for about a round until I get to the other side of the bird. And as I'm pulling this through, I am just laying it flat inside of there. I do not want to pull so tight that it causes like a line um, in that round where you can see that you've pulled it too tight. So I don't want a loop to stick up like this, but I also don't want to yank on it. So I'm just setting it in there. And then when you get this finished, we're going to cut off that yarn right there and make sure that you're not cutting into your project, that you're only cutting your tail. And then there's always that little bit of a yarn fuzz that we want to get rid of. And that is it, guys. We have finished our cardinal and I think that this is going to be a great addition to markets. Um, I also think that this is a great winter Christmas time project. So make sure you leave a comment down below and let me know how your cardinal turned out and are you planning on taking it to a market or are you gifting it to someone or keeping it for yourself? And I will see you guys in the next tutorial. Bye!